Now for something completely different. Hi, um, I'm Willa. I run art classes at the two women's prisons in Framingham. Um, and, and, you know, we have a lot of rules. I think it's defined in a way as much by what it's not as what it is. One of the rules was no pictures, so I can't show you any of the pictures. Um, but, and, you know, just things that are forbidden. Um, like, no naked ladies, even though I kind of feel like everyone in my class probably knows what a naked lady looks like. <laughs> you know, so I can't bring a picture of that in. If one of the ladies were to draw it and try to take it back to the room, it's a problem. I think prison creativity is a subject for a lot of jokes in our culture. You know, Martha Stewart is going to craft a shiv out of a plastic spoon or, you know, whatever. Um, the quotes, by the way, are quotes from the ladies in the class that someone gathered for me um, for this. So it's just interspersed with pictures of things that we can't have in class that we might wish that we could. Um, but, you know, so some people, um, you know, some, like, art, the art's not all angst or, you know, cartoon and tattoos, some of it is, but it's, you know, it's a lot of different things. Um, people make all kinds of different stuff, we, things that we can make. We can't make origami, for instance, you could hide stuff in it. Who knows what, but you could. Um, <laughs> so you might say, but well, the people are in prison because they've done something wrong. Well, sure, but I mean, everyone's done something bad. I mean, like, there's, there's you know, probably a lot of us in this room have done things that we shouldn't. Um, and, I mean, I think giving people some respect is probably a better way to make them better people anyway. Um, and, you know, I, mean, I think it's also especially hard being a creative person in prison um, because creative people don't tend to work so well with the rules. Um, so, and of course, there are some people that come to class that are not really, you know, particularly, they don't think of themselves as creative people. Some of the people that come to the class are actually you know, artists when they come in, but some of them are not, and a lot of them end up really surprising themselves. They say, oh, I can't draw, and then they draw something absolutely amazing. Um, so, you know, and either way, I think everybody can benefit from creating, even if it's not necessarily great art. Um, and sometimes I wonder, like, is this too superficial? Like, come, I hang out, we make art, it's fun. Um, and, you know, I'd love to have someone that could actually come and teach drawing, which I can't do. Um, but uh, I think, in a way, the appeal of my class is it's not particularly challenging. Um, it's, it's, everyone needs some space, and they don't get a lot of that. The prison has this idea that you need to be challenged all the time so you can be perfect, so you can follow every rule all the time, and you can't do that. So, it's, there, there is no bar that you have to clear to participate in my class. Um, it is a little hard for me, kind of, you know, logistically, but also emotionally, I know, you know, like sometimes my route, you know, do going doing other things during the week takes me past the prison, and I'm like, there are people in there that are, you know, in need of help, and I can't stop by and visit them. They don't even know I'm there. Um, but I think the really amazing thing, I mean, in spite of this massive disruption, people are losing their houses, they're losing their careers, they're losing custody of their children, even for small infractions. You know, you go to prison even for a short time, and it really can mess you up for life. Um, but people keep such good spirits, it's really quite amazing how they, you know, manage to work with one another, um, help one another, um, you know, people sing and dance in my class to cheer one another up. Um, and I mean, it's, it's a hugely diverse group. Everything from a woman who had never heard of NPR to another woman who actually has been a reporter for both WBUR and WGBH and was telling me about the differences in the cultures of those places. Um, but, but they're just, they, they work together so amazingly well. And I mean, of course, people break rules. Occasionally people steal stuff from my class. Red and black, I think, because their makeup colors tend to disappear. But, you know, who among us has not, like, taken a pen from a class? You know, I mean, like, but we're not getting strip searched. So, you know, it's, it's, Regarding prisoners as damaged goods, I think is a way that we protect ourselves. Or, like this is something that happens to those people. It's not something that could happen to me. Um, but I mean, you know, we're all damaged in in different ways. And so I don't think you know prisoners are not damaged goods any more than any of us. Um, so with my last few seconds that I have here, I want to share something that one of the ladies, actually the, the reporter from WBUR had written as if she were me when we were talking about doing this presentation. She said, as if she were me, I'm not 
not a morning person. I drive half an hour to get to South Middlesex Correctional Center by 8.30 every Saturday and Sunday morning. I lug art books. Uh, I negotiate with prison officials who in many ways would prefer that there was no art at all. I spend a lot of time handing out supplies to satisfy a lot of different urges, skills, and moods. Why bother for free on weekends? Because of the energy, the pure, obvious dedication and spirit, the good conversation, humor, and happiness these classes generate makes it entirely worth the effort, no question. And she's right. So. Thank you. Um,